Good morning again, everyone. Well, I've managed to solve that problem, so we're going to delete the last update that you're seeing on uh, uh, GGR Facebook right now, and we'll start again completely. So uh, um, I think the issue was my problem. I might not have, um, uh, you know, I just rebooted everything anyway, and it seems to be coming back online and all working. So uh, hopefully I can get this one underway. So uh, we've already got the image here. Uh, as you can see, I'll start again because we're just deleting the other one and there'll be people coming on all day. Francesco up the top there uh, doing 4.5 knots. Um, uh, he's got one little area here of uh, not much wind and he'll be across the equator in the next couple of days. So that's kind of good. Um, Sue Haley is uh, bolting along again on the move on the hunt for Antoine, um, sitting over here doing 4.2. And as I explained uh, previously, if uh, you, he's doing a negative uh, in the last 24 hours, he's gone negative 0.6 nautical miles if you look in the box. And that's purely because there is a waypoint down here under Cape Town, the little red dot that you see, and the distance is measured from Antoine to that red dot. And he's been sailing in this sort of angle. So if you imagine a piece of string stretched from there out to Antoine, um, as it's pivoting, you know, like as he's going brr, like this, he's actually gone away. The string needs to be longer. So it's actually extended um, six nautical miles out further. So he's gone negative six miles to the, to the mark, which is over here. So that's all about VMG. He sailed away from the mark, but he's still sailing okay. Sailing conservative, but having a good time. Now, this is where it gets interesting, and this is why I decided to do another live update here. The first thing I want to say, hey, look at that. Susie doesn't have a name alongside. Um, you think we're getting a few posts on Facebook about, where's Susie label on the tag, you know, on the map? It's over there, you know, you don't like her. Uh, you should see the emails I get. <laughs> so we have no control over this label, but I just want to show you something for the moment. See, Susie's got no label. Uku's got a label. Igor's got a label. It's generated by the software program. So if we start zooming in, you'll see Susie pop up with a label in a minute because there's room to put, oh, look at that. Surprise, surprise. Susie's now got a name, so hopefully no one ever complains again about Susie not having a tag. Um, it's got nothing to do with me, it's a software program. We all love Susie, and if she ain't got a name, you just gotta zoom in and you'll find her. Um, but we all know she's the purple boat, so that's kind of cool. And uh, this gives you uh, some interesting uh, information here. You can see this high pressure system here. This is the traditional South Atlantic high. So the winds now, headwinds for Mark Sinclair. Um, so he's on port tack heading down here, doing quite well, 4.3 knots. He's not hard on the breeze because it's his birthday and uh, he wants to have a good party. So um, he'll be enjoying the ride a bit, but I dare I say it, it'll be quite wet on board. Uh, Isfan's the same. He's got stronger winds. The orange up here is probably getting 25 knots or more. So he's actually, and the direction's a little bit different than Mark, so he's actually heading off southwest. That's all he can do, um, you know, in those conditions. So not heading towards Cape Town or anything, but there you go. Poor old uh, Tommy down here in a big hole. He's only making three knots, so he's still moving, but he's, he's coming away. Loik's tacked across. He's tacked down when it when it moved up, 4.3 knots heading south. Tapio's the same. Igor's out the other way. Now, Tapio's got a few problems right now. Um, you can see he tacked on the breeze. He was going out northeast. He tacked across, and he's now heading south. Um, so that was difficult. But the, he, we had an unscheduled phone call from Tapio yesterday. Not sounding too happy. He's uh, still got no engine, and uh, he's got his water generator working, but he's blowing some fittings on his um, coupling where it plugs in and all that sort of stuff. And he's only got one little spares left. So he and it's been every two days that's been happening. So he thinks in the next two days he will lose his hot water generator completely, which means he won't have any uh, water power. And his solar panels um, are only putting out, instead of 300 watts, he's getting about 10 watts, which is virtually nothing. It's a trickle charge into the battery. So, so very soon, Tapio might be what we call dark ship. He's got no electrical energy at all. Uh, we discussed, I told him, why don't you just rip the solar panels off the deck and hot wire them because there's something, solar panels are very stable, very simple. They have um, two wires coming out of it, a positive and negative, and then they usually have regulators and other electronics downstream from the actual panel. And I've suggested he rips some panels off, get back to the basic wires and hot wire them direct to the battery and, and measure the voltage of the battery with a voltmeter or a multimeter so you don't overcharge them. And uh, hopefully that might get him going. So. Um, it's yet to determine what's going on. You've got to understand Tapio is a really good sailor. He's very determined about this race, and we actually discussed him going around dead ship. 
with no power, same as Suhalian and Matessia and all that, they had no electrical energy. So um, we discussed various aspects of safety in terms of what we need him to do, uh, if that was the case, because we need to monitor his safety and so on. Um, but at the end of the day, what actually happens will be his choice. He's dreading the fact that he might have to go to Cape Town uh, because that'll be Chichester class and uh, you know, Tapio's a stayer. So uh, watch this space and we'll see what happens. Anyway, Igor is uh, sailing off at five knots and uh, uh, doing quite well there, quite big, powerful, heavy boat, so maybe um, uh, you know, able to carry the conditions a little bit better. Um, I'm not talking about Susie at the moment. I'll talk about her in a minute because that's a very interesting story. Uh, Uku, uh, doing what you'd expect. He's got average winds there, getting closer to the band, so he'd be doing okay. He's doing 5.5. Starboard tack, making good time. He'd be enjoying that because he knows it's going to the weather will change and he can tack over. Mark Slats the same, making southeast. He'll be enjoying himself. Six knots. Uh, Wig on the hunt for Mark and uh, Gregor. You know he's been. You know Gregor and R have been doing very well in the last week. They've they've made great crowns. Philippe, what a champion! Look at this. The only problem is he doesn't have a wind vane, but he's still sailing really well. Um, I'm surprised at how well he's managing to go with no wind vane at all, hand steering. Maybe he's done a sheet to tiller, I'm not sure, um, but uh, certainly uh, in a hurry to get to Cape Town. He still hasn't asked us for a time penalty yet. For uh, He's still technically in Chichester class, so we'll see that might change in the next couple of days. So that if he stopped now at Cape Town, he'd be out of the event, but um, I'm sure we'll sort that out and he can stop and get things sorted and get underway again as quick as possible. Jean-Luc uh, rocketing down in a very nice position. He's um, pulling away obviously from Philippe, uh, heading two different directions. Cape Town is over here. Uh, you can see Philippe and Beeline is straight for Cape Town, but Jean-Luc is down, headed underneath Cape Town and on his way to Hobart, that's the plan. Um, so what's going on with Susie? Now look at this, I'll build it up another stone. She's been on um, starboard tack for a couple of days, heading way out to the northeast. Everyone's saying, what's going on with Susie? Um, honestly, I don't know. Her message yesterday was to tack or not to tack. She's decided not to tack and keep moving. She will we'll look at what happens to the weather in a minute. Uh, we don't want that. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and yeah, she's just locked in there going out and doesn't know when to tack. Now I'll tell you a little thing that can happen here, and you see it in yacht racing every now and then, or, or especially solo stuff, a skipper gets obsessed with what's going on. And they can say, no, this is the best way to go. And is it or isn't it? That's irrelevant. The thing is the skipper becomes obsessed and can't make a decision. I've seen this plenty of times over the years. And if, you read, if you've read Sir Robin Knox Donchon's book on um, his uh, uh, trip around the world in the original Golden Globe race, there was a classic case of this uh, in the uh, Pacific. Uh, he's in the Southern Ocean. He's heading out on a northeast tack like this. Uh, he had slight headwinds sort of thing. He, he didn't want to tack. He just kept going. He's obsessed and thinking he was doing the right thing. And then all of a sudden it dawned on him. He said, what am I doing? I'm sailing away from the mark uh, and I'm on the wrong side of the weather system. So he tacked across and for the next few days he was really regretting not tacking earlier. And uh, really, I'm not worried about Susie. She's totally in control. We know she's uh, sailing well. She's doing 5.4 knots. She's quite comfortable. But if you ask me, I've got no idea why she's heading out there. <coughs> Excuse me. Other than the fact that um, if she tacked now, uh, you can see here the wind's gone to the south, so she would be going back like Tapio did. She would, as this pressure system moves, she would head back the other way. So it's a tricky decision. I think she's probably doing the right thing at the moment um, because if she was to tack from there, she'd be heading straight into this, this sudden curve of the breeze and she knows where it is probably. And so she's on a loser if she goes the other way and she's going into lighter winds. So she's probably worried that she's sailing away from the mark and going where she doesn't want to go, but it's the best option. Um, so we'll see, we'll just have to watch this space. Um, I think I've done a sweep of everyone. So let's just go down one notch here and watch what happens to the weather. So we go ahead one day, uh, we go ahead one day uh, still, it changes quickly. Now, this is the, if Susie did tack, she would be down, she, she'd be coming south, but she'll meet these, these better winds straight away. As soon as she gets here, she's rocketing off with the wind on the starboard quarter. She'd be broad reaching. So it's time for Susie to tack. Uh, you'll probably see that in the next, in the next few hours when the next position comes up. Um, Toby, to, Tommy needs to get down here and get into these winds uh, at the bottom. These guys are trapped on the top of this high, so uh, they can't go anywhere until the whole thing starts to move across to the east, which it will do slowly. Mark's looking good, Jean-Luc's looking good. Um, he's on the top of these big winds. 
Um, so the guys up the top here, the other side of the high, big problem. They're gonna push through this light wind and they're gonna stop. Um, so, you know, not much you can do there. If we come forward another day, uh, here we go. Bingo, okay, so it's starting to form up a bit. Um, and you can see what's happening here with Jean-Luc. Oh, here we go, oh, oh, we don't want that. Um, and then they've got to get under Cape Town and Jean-Luc's gonna to start to get into some big wins here. If we come through another day, you can see it's squashing up, oh, leveling out there, that's pretty good, it's 20 seconds, so that's a good two days, two and a bit days ahead. We'll go three days ahead. Ooh, Jean-Luc's getting a good ride, he'll be out of there by then. These guys will be, um, they, they might hold this ridge coming down. It's actually changing. I haven't looked at this since yesterday. There's a bit of a hole. This is where Jean-Luc's gonna get into some issues and I'll explain this with the current, okay? Because we issued uh, two navigation warnings to the fleet yesterday. Uh, remembering if I wanna look at the current now, I push this down, come to the currents, hit that, and you'll bring the currents up. Now, what we did here, we issued a warning for this eddy. You can see, I'll increase the scope on this. This one's quite a nasty one. Uh, there's this little, very strong eddy here. It's been sitting there, I've been watching it for a week or more. It's not moving. It's well established, well defined, and big currents. The, the, this is a forecast current of about three, three and a half knots, so it could be running at five knots, okay? And that's uh, going around in a clockwise direction, okay, like this. And Jean-Luc wants to come down the bottom. If he came into here, sort of thing, through here, with huge southwesterly winds, the sea will get horrific. So we consider this to be a navigational hazard now. We've put a 150 mile box around this, given them the center of that box and said, watch out for this current. It'll be up to them to decide what they want to do. Looks like Jean-Luc will probably try to come down the bottom. If he hooks in here, they're following currents and depending if the wind direction is southwest, it's sort of coming from behind and current wind and waves together is not so bad, but this could be a bit of a problem. Uh, so we've warned everyone about that. Then in terms of the Agullis current, uh, which is this this whole stream coming down here, which I mentioned the other day. If you look at, it, we've given another navigation warning, which which covers this this area in here. Um, most sailors will already know about this. Most of the ancients know about it, and they'll want to come down here, possibly depending on what they perceive the weather to be. You could cut across here. Um, in mild weather, but not in strong weather, because if the wind's coming this way and you've got four or five knots of current coming this way, huge problem. You do not want to be in this area here. And that's about 80 miles across there. So it's quite a big area. And this is coming to, from the north through to the, you know, heading in the south or southwesterly direction. And then as soon as you get 80 miles over here, uh, it's going roaring up to the north, you know, from the south. This one's not a problem really, because you'll be underneath it. This is our exclusion zone. So we've given a navigation warning on that, we've given a navigation warning on that, and what we're doing is we're raising the southern limit now, it's official, up to 42 degrees south, there's 40 degrees south. Um, this is 44 degrees south where it currently sits. We're raising it to 42 degrees south, but only from 40 degrees east. This is the 40 degrees east longitude line down here. So that gives them room to come around here and, and sail through. But once they get in this area, they're gonna to have to head up a bit because you'll see this orange zone extend up two degrees halfway, and it'll go across like that, all the way across to Hobart. And I've explained that previously. Um, so it'll step up from here, it'll step up from there. You'll see it come up there and then go along like that. Um, and that's all about keeping them a, a little bit further away from the bad weather. So, um, so yeah, lots going on in the tracker this morning. It's um, uh, Mark's birthday. He's having a hard time getting east, but there you go. And uh, everyone else is doing pretty well. Uh, watch this space. And uh, yeah, the fun is about to begin, or fun for us, I suppose, and, and quite, quite uh, adventurous and challenging. Uh, and uh, yeah, watch, I think Susie will tack very soon. I hope so. Then I might stop getting so many emails about it. What's Susie doing? <laughs> so she's having a great time. She's in the GGR. Thanks for that. I'll uh, uh, see you again later on.